Hey guys, today we're uh, working on a Ferrari Mondial engine. Uh, we are doing some cam degreeing. Uh, this one had to get a timing belt, had to do the valve adjustment, switch out the shims. Uh, right now I've got the shims set um, so that we can check the degreeing. Um, I'll talk about a little bit about that and we're gonna get into it. So going through on the, the shims, they have, uh, there's these shims in between um, the lifters and the cam here. Uh, they're removable. There's a special Ferrari tool I could show you, uh, the tool that I have um, that I made. It's not that difficult. Uh, basically, you have to shim these and set them to spec. On this one specifically, it's 20 thousandths inch or 0.5 millimeters. Um, so we set uh, cylinder one, these uh, outside two, to that spec, and then cylinder five on the other side, we set to that spec. Um, to uh, work on that. So now the degree wheel, basically to get this one zeroed, you have to find top dead center, uh, which we already did that. Uh, basically what you're gonna do to set this top dead center is you're gonna run this thing around until the piston is at the top. And to find the actual true center, uh, you're gonna set, you're gonna rough up the wheel and basically get it to approximately zero here where, you know, rough it in. Then we put a dial indicator, which is this here. It's actually set up for something else right now, and I'll talk about that in a second. But basically, you're gonna set it up with the dial indicator going down uh, into the cylinder through this hole here, which we made a, a bracket that uh, just held it stationary so it can't move, went down through the spark plug hole, and basically zeroed it out so it was touching the piston, and then rolling it over before and top dead center to determine when it's moving, when it isn't moving, and zeroed it out. And then we ran it uh, before top dead center and after top dead center. So basically to uh, 50 thousandths, you're just finding an equal amount on either side so that you know um, where it is on either side of the piston coming up, the piston coming down. So we, I went to 50 thousandths you know, on this side and then on that side. And basically that came up with 13 and a half degrees before and 13 and a half degrees after so that I knew that that was the true center. Now we set, so we set, originally we had set top dead center with the degree wheel on cylinder one so that we could find the uh, degree out this side. Now the other side, you're gonna have to go through and you're gonna have to set top dead center again on this bank because of it being a flat plane, flat plane crank. So on this side, um, after checking uh, the degrees on the cams, uh, basically like when we ran it over on top dead center the first time, we could see right off the bat that something was going on here because there's a mark on the cam and then on this cap here to get you kind of in the ballpark where it's supposed to be. And it's way off. It's, set, it's on top dead center number one right now. And you can see it's quite a distance off. On this one, it was pretty close, but it, it wasn't 100%. So after checking this bank over here, uh, we came to the conclusion that this one is approximately 19, like between 17 and 19 degrees off, and this one was off about five to six. So we're gonna have to go in and adjust these cams to get them into spec and then check it again. Okay, so as far as like what tools that I was using for using the, sh to taking the shims in and out, basically I just bent a screwdriver and that's literally all I did and this is going to hold the shim bucket down so you can pull those out. And to get the shim bucket down, I literally just used a radiator hose pick and you can kind of slide it in there and push it down so that you can lock it. And then I just used a, a hose pick and just kind of pulled it, pulled it out of the bucket a little bit and then just use a magnet to pull it straight out of there uh, to get these shims out. Basically these shims, uh, they just look like these little guys and they're, they're numbered on the top and that's, the, uh, that's actual measurement. And when you, uh, when you order them, uh, it'll have the specific measurement. You can order in every single increment and that way you know, you know what you're putting in and whatever. Uh, so basically you just go through and you're gonna check it all with your feeler gauges to make sure that it's within spec and if it's not, you either need to go with a thicker shim or a looser shim to get it to where you need to be.
up. 15 to 16. Yeah, it's about 16 when that starts to move. Now we're gonna keep going until it closes. We're looking for 124. So when that stops, about 130. Let's check again. One thirty one, one thirty and a half, something like that. So one thirty eight point five. So as you can see here, I'm running it back up towards that 12 degree mark is what we're leaning for. See, so just barely started to move. And we're at about nine and a half to 10, somewhere in there. So it's pretty close. Measuring on the other side, it was like dead even at 124. So after seeing that last measurement, we decided to, we're going to move this one pin, which is what we did. We moved it one pin, and basically it moves the gear uh, in that direction, one pin length. If you look inside here, there's different pins. There's different holes on the inside as there is on the outside that allow you different adjustments. So we're going one pin, we're gonna run it around and see what we get. Okay, so we're coming up on that 12 degree measurement again. Let's see what we get. Out there, I went a little bit too far, but I'd say it's it's about 12. So now we're gonna run it around to the next measurement and check that. Should be 124 down here. That's about it. We're at. 27 and a half ish okay so on this intake cam on the passenger side uh, just an example basically uh, our spec was 12 degrees before top dead center and 56 degrees after bottom dead center and what we were measuring out at was 50 after uh, after bottom dead center and 17 before top dead center so there's a difference of about five degrees uh, before top dead center and uh, after, top, or after bottom dead center, it was about six degrees. So what we were gonna do is go in and move the pin uh, two spots over um, to get it back into spec, because we found that each pin location is approximately three degrees. So by moving it two, we should get it into spec by going to about six degrees, uh, which should get it pretty close to where we need to be. Okay, so after a whole lot of messing around off camera, we were able to get this uh, intake cam on this side to, it was about um, 11 degrees on the before top dead center and then 55 on the after bottom dead center. And that's realistically about as close as you can get because there's just, there's not enough, like there's a lot of adjustment, don't get me wrong, but none of them are like one degree increments. So that's about as close as we can get. Um, and some of it could be possibly that the lash may not be 100%. I mean, it's checking good by a feeler gauge, but I mean, if, if, if it's off by, a, you know, a thousandth or, you know, two thousandths or something like that, I mean, it could drastically change it. I mean, I was, they were measuring out pretty close to 20 thousandths, so it should be okay. Um, I don't see a problem. We're gonna move on to the other bank and keep on going. So I just wanted to go through and show uh, basically what's going on with this dial indicator. Essentially, um, what you're going to do when you're checking for the, uh, the duration on the cams that agrees, so basically what you want to do is you want to get the dial indicator in a position on the shim or the lift or the lifter bucket itself uh, where it's out of the way so when the cam load comes around it doesn't hit this. 
but it's also making contact the whole the whole sweep. What we found on this engine specifically is that it's very difficult to get it to go straight on. And realistically, it doesn't matter that much because we're not checking the actual distance. All we're checking for is when it's moving and when it's not moving. So uh, as long as you can get in there and get a good uh, bite on it where it's not gonna slip off, you're okay. Um, basically, you just, you're gonna set this dial indicator so that it's touching to a certain amount, which actually right now it's probably a little bit loose, uh, but you want it to be on there enough that it's, it has a little bit of, a little bit of sweep in it already. You don't want to be all the way at the top of your range on this because obviously this moves here. So we'd probably want to be somewhere in here so it's somewhere in the middle. And basically you want to have it mounted so that it's firm and it's not going to fall off. This is reasonably steady. I mean, this is kind of, it's kind of wonky where it's at right now, but when we were checking it earlier, uh, it wasn't moving as much, I'll admit. I don't know what happened. I think we messed with it too much off camera. Uh, but once you get it sturdy, uh, it sh we want just basically you want to make sure that it doesn't move at all. Because if it does, it can screw with your readings. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of go over the uh, cam gear uh, adjustments. So basically what we found is if you look at these holes here, like if this one is straight on because the pin is in it, this one is a little bit off. This one's a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Until you go all the way over here and you can see these ones are kind of half and half. So basically the reason that it's doing that is the cam gear itself has 15 holes and the cam has 16 holes. So what we found is basically if you take this pin and you move it one hole on the cam gear and then you rotate the cam to the nearest spot where it slots in, that's three degrees. And if you do the same thing and you jump over two, move it to that position, that becomes six degrees. So every slot ends up being three degrees. The other thing to, to note that was important is that if you leave it attached to the cam, everything is still tight and you rotate the cam gear with the cam attached one tooth, that becomes approximately 11 and a half degrees. So there's a tremendous amount of adjustment on these cam gears and it's very tricky to get it right. So um, I highly advise that when you're doing this, double and triple check your math. And when in doubt, make a smaller change than making a big swing because otherwise you could run into a lot of problems where you know things could be contacting one another. Okay, so that's gonna do it on this video. I just wanted to go over a few things here at the end just to clarify. If anybody has any questions, you can ask in the, um, in the comments section. Uh, this is, this whole degree in the cams on this engine is definitely not for a do-it-yourselfer. If you have any doubts that, you know, something might go wrong and you don't feel confident in what you're doing, I strongly recommend you find someone that does to either do it for you or assist you in doing it because I, there's not a lot of information out on this engine and this setup and it's, it's really hard to find instructions on it. And if you don't fully understand you know what uh, you know what is happening inside the engine when you're turning it and adjusting these valves and you know to green these cams and you know you could have catastrophic results so I yeah I, I strongly recommend you find someone to help you with that um, also this is definitely a job that I recommend you have two people uh, because you're going to need one person to hold the cam gears and a second person to break them free torque them up um, as well as you know various miscellaneous things while you're doing this degreeing it just helps to have a second person not to mention uh, to help you know bounce bounce uh, ideas off just to make sure you're not making the wrong call not to say that you couldn't do it yourself it's just probably a better idea if you had a second person that and I would definitely write everything down so you know what you've done what you plan on doing so that if you make a mistake you can go back to where you were uh, not to mention, if you notice, like on these cam gears, when I was uh, doing all these adjustments, I made a bunch of marks, and now they, they don't line up. That's because they've been moved, and um, so if I didn't know what I had done, <laughs> this would look really bad. But um, the one thing to keep in mind is there are those marks on the cams to line up with those cam towers. In addition to, there is a mark on the, uh, the crank pulley itself, which, uh, um, let's see if I can find it. There's a mark on this pulley. You can see where there's a mark 
uh, where it's supposed to go straight up. You can see it right there. There's like a, there's a dot right at the top. And that kind of tells you where top dead center is. It's supposed to be straight up. But once again, you still want to check it with a dial indicator to find true top dead center. Uh, the other thing is, it's really tricky to get, uh, depending on what degree wheel you have, the one we had here, we found that we, uh, it was really tricky to tighten this down and keep the degree wheel where it needed to be. So you may have to tighten it, loosen it multiple times to get it centered. All right, so like and subscribe, ring the bell, do all those things, and peace out.